Hello, this is Ken Ferry with this week's Boots in the Field report. This week doing field visits was a lot nicer than last week's pressure cooker. Last week, heat added one more dimension to this crop. Not sure what more we can throw at it. Cold spring, frost, flash drought, rootless corn, derecho winds, hail, and in some cases, heavy rain, and now 100 degree heat. This week, the aftermath of the heat stress is visible in many fields. On many fields, it's evident by the amount of top dieback that we see in the corn. The dieback has multiple causes. Some are heat stress related, some are insect related, some are disease related, and in some cases, all the above. I'm seeing a lot of anthracnose top kill, which is disease related, and some corn borer damage in a few non-GMO fields. Top kill and insect damage are more random in the fields. With corn borer damage, I'm finding dead tops, and in many cases, the tops are already broken over from the wind. With corn borer, you'll be able to see evidence of the tunneling in the node and likely to find the larva still in the plant. With anthracnose top kill, you'll find random plants with the tops dead and typically random plants completely dead with the ear hanging down. With this top kill, you'll see some black spores on the outside of the lower stalk of dead plants. And with the top kill, uh, you'll find black areas on the top of the plant under the leaf sheath. And when you split the top of that stalk, you'll see the discoloration. Now, anthracnose top kill is hybrid related, but tends to show up in most hybrids as they start to senesce after black layer. The more a hybrid is stressed, the quicker it shows up. While fields sprayed with the fungicide show less top kill, it doesn't stop it. The later fungicide applications seem to have helped the most. Fields that are running tight on N or dealing with compaction issues seem to show more anthracnose top kill. With disease again, it's a little more random, but I have seen fields ranging from 2% to 70% top kill. Many fields, it's due to just too high a heat. In this case, it'll be uniform from corner to corner. Almost every plant has top kill. Fungicides seem to make no difference at all. You won't see the black underneath the leaf sheath on the top and you won't see the discoloration in the stem or the stalk when you split it. This is a bigger issue in shorter corn with upright leaf structure. Many of these fields didn't reach 95% light capture. They're more like 70% capture. With that much sunlight hitting the ground, it turns up the heat just too high. This short corn was done growing, ready to push tassel, when the end of June, early July rains came. While the rain saved the crop, our plant growth was finished and we quickly shifted into reproductive stages. Corn planted after May 10th was still three to five leaves from tassel. And when the June 29th storm hit, bringing the much needed rain, this corn was still in the vegetative state and is now three foot taller than the earlier corn. This allowed the May 10th and later corn to reach 95% light capture and keep that plant cooler last week, almost eliminating heat stress. We have less heat stress in our narrow row corn for the same reason, not letting sunlight get deep in that canopy. You'll notice your more pendulum leaf structure corn will show less heat stress as well. The heat stress corn has more tip down ears as well. The ears tipping down is from lack of turgor pressure to hold them up. When they flip completely down, the ear fill will slow if not stop. Last week, I saw some fields starting to tip the ear. And when the weather cooled and we got that inch of rain, they actually raised back up. Don't see that very often. In many of the fields that had complete top kill from the heat, they also have the ears tipped down. 
which looks funny. You have green ears below and above the uh, green leaves above and below the ear with the top of the plant dead and the ear hanging over. I wish I could tell you that this top kill came late and due to the didn't do any damage, but unfortunately many fields are only half milk line, meaning they needed another 15 or 20 days of kernel fill. In these fields, I think we're going to have to stay with an 80 to 85 factor when we're dividing especially if they're dehybrids, ones that get a lot of their yield in the last 30 days. Losing the top of the plant is going to push this plant to get to black layer fast at the cost of kernel depth. Fields with top kill from the heat may still have good stock integrity. Fields with top kill from anthracnose top kill and dead plants from anth anthracnose stock rot will need to be watched for standability. Let's start our push test in the next 10 days, pushing that stock at a 30 to 45 degree angle and see if it buckles. We'll need to scout for standability as we put the harvest plans together. With this stress of top kill, things will speed up and harvest will be here sooner than later, unfortunately, with less yield. Now with that said, we do have a lot of fields coming down to that perfect photo finish where the plant is green two leaves below the ear and all the way to the top while the husks are starting to ripen. These fields will pack in the starts till finish and we can divide them by 70 to 75. As we walk through most fields, there's a high number of plants with smut on the lower stalk about a foot off the ground. A number of growers have asked, could this be from my Y-drop application? And true mechanical damage to the crop can make it more susceptible to smut if we have a rain splashing event. But I see the higher amount of smut in a majority of fields, whether they are side dressed or not. I do believe this smut came from the derecho event that also brought the driving rain. I think the wind damage and the driving rain um, were the cause of the stock damage and the splashing event that uh, we got with that rain after it tipped this corn over brought the smut. The good news is even the plants with smut on the bottom are putting on a good ear. The amount of ear molds here locally is way, way down. So that's a good thing. We continue to find more tar spot. Last week we found a uh, tar spot in Dewood and Woodford counties. The tar spot we're finding now is at the top of the plant, meaning it's blowing in here. Now, most of this corn is R5 and a half. It's far enough along. Tar spot will not be a threat for this year. I want to talk about and touch on realistic yield goals, yield estimates. This year, if we don't do realistic yield estimates, we could be setting ourselves up for disappointment. As I do field visits, I see a lot of yields in that 170 to 220 range. I can tell when I announce my findings, most growers are disappointed. I know I could have bought most of these fields for that back on June 28. It's not uncommon for growers to say, man, when I checked it, it mathed at 250, 270. The problem is uniform ear count. This year, due to rootless corn syndrome and the drought, we have the most ununiform ears that I've seen in some time. Most plants have ears, but the shorter plants have half ears. They got good girth, they just don't have length. If I'm with, in the field with Homer, he'll count all the plants or he'll count all the ears and then he'll pull the big ears to do his kernel check. If I'm in the field with cautious, he'll pull the small ears. On years like this, with such varying ear size, I found two different ways to do the yield check that work for me. One is to look at each ear as you're doing your ear count and start putting smaller ears together to make one. Now you may have 36 ears out there, but when you merge your small ears together, that would drop to 31. When you get your ear count figured out, then choose the full size ears to do your count. The smaller ears will be accounted for in that ear count. Another way 
is to take 10 ears in a row and count the kernels on them so the abnormal number of small ears is correctly accounted for and average the whole thing together. When it comes to selecting how many kernels to divide by, use your hybrid yearbooks for hybrids past performance as well as looking at plant health. If the plant health is showing stress and it's only half milk line, stay 80 or above. If the plant is solid and most of these have very little disease, this year go ahead and move that kernel count down to 70 or 75. On the bean front, SDS continues to catch plants as well. We can see the difference between our treated beans, but there's still some in them. In some local areas, we're seeing heavy pressure from a new flush of bean leaf beetle, some stink bugs, and loopers. While I don't think this will be a problem for, for commercial beans, stay on top of your seed beans. As soon as these beans start to turn, this population will move to the pods and start feeding. We don't want to lose our premiums uh, on these seed beans. With all the dieback in the corn, we'll see late rootworm beetles migrating to greener cornfields or bean fields. Now, if you're seeing rootworm beetle with all the other insects in your soybean fields, you may want to take them out and get two birds of one stone. Two weeks ago, I was excited about the new raised seams on almost all beans, and for a second, I thought this could be wild for this year's yield. But last, year, last week's heat took care of all of that. They all aborted. It was a nice dream while it lasted. Our crews are preparing for the fall testing season. Don't forget to call in your fields as you knock them out. If you got any fall testing that hasn't been turned in yet, let's get that done so our inside crew can have it ready for the testers as soon as you give us the word. Our virtual scouting team is starting the second round of scouting. It'll be interesting to see the before and after pictures of how this crop has changed in 30 days. For local farmers here around Hayworth that are looking for dolomitic lime, Vulcan material has been railing lime down to their champagne lot from Kankakee. And I've been told there's quite a pile on the ground over there, so you might make your retailers aware of that if they don't already know it. To stay up to date, check out our website at croptechinc.com. Dot com and subscribe to our podcast, Boots in the Field Report. Keep her safe, keep her moving.